So I will start with um, a couple of advices. Uh, one is um, to gather information about your scanners and you know get the resources that SCTs for actually has for starting the program. We have a starter kit. Uh, on our webpage for the members to sort of educate about which scanner do you need? What do you need in terms of support, in terms of personnel and space? It's very important you have the nurse to administer the medications, uh, electronic medical record system that supports that, that you have technologies that are trained and able to perform scan. Again, SCCT provide resources for technologies uh, to teach them. And then once the program is running or before it's running, you have to work with your referring base. And Michael, Christina, I already mentioned it. You need the group of people that are enthusiastic, that understand the results of the test. Uh, so communicate with them in the initial phase, really to work and communicate the results of the test. Go maybe beyond just the report, go and pick up the phone, discuss the results that are important for the patient. Uh, and that way sort of build the referral base. I think really build with your community to create a relationship with those who order the test. Those are some pieces of advices that I have. Uh, Christina, what would you add? Um, I would, you know, because I have my my former partner, Dr. Friend, I mean, Maros, here on the, the call as well. I would say uh, get a report with your cardiologist if you're a radiologist like I am and vice versa, because this is a team effort. You know, this is not a single single woman standing. I can do it myself. This uh, you need to have buy-in from cardiology. You need to have buy-in from radiology, and you need to have two champions in both divisions, departments, whatever you want to call it, uh, to make this happen. Because the last thing you need is someone to torpedo your efforts because they don't believe in it, and and that unfortunately has happened, uh, from what I hear. Uh, so uh, that collaboration is critical, and I think that every. A department or every institution practice that runs it success of, sex, successfully will will attest to that, because uh, you you also have the advantage then to train your trainees, uh, which you have you know if you're in an academic institution on both sides, so that you bring the next generation up to, to this endeavor. Because you know starting a program also means that you have to you have to create a supply chain of people who will then continue your work, whether it's on the technologist side or on the a physician side and and I find this very very critical uh, having the opportunity to train trainees on both sides of the fence as a as a collaborative effort great well we'll turn over to Michael maybe also with some advice on some of the business aspects and billing aspects if you can share that with our audience <laughs> I am often all too involved with billing uh my company is always uh say I'm an honorary member of their RCM internal billing teams um with cardiac imaging and all the new CPT codes and the changes from category three to category one, uh, it's important to be involved. Uh, you won't have a program for long if you're not building correctly. So when it comes to building a program, it really depends on what is your setting? Are you talking about hospital setting? Are you talking about a smaller outpatient setting, two to three offices in one single geography? Are you looking at 10 offices potentially throughout one single state, multiple states? 50 offices, 100 offices. The the challenges that you get really depends on what your your where your starting point is, what does your group look like and what you're trying to accomplish. So, if you have a office where it's say two to three offices in one particular region, the focus really needs to be on as was mentioned earlier, looking at your hardware and and protocols and scanning acquisition, that might be one of the harder parts of that. When you start expanding into the business of cardi cardiac imaging and multiple offices, dozens of offices, you really need to take a step back and realize the easy the, the easiest part of all this is actually scanning the patient. <laughs> um, we have good established protocols for that, take some education, but that's actually the easiest part. The hardest part is everything related around that. When I start a cardiac program, the very first thing I, I look at is I survey the territory. What's our starting point? Um, What's your hardware you're working with? What's the rotation time? Um, what software packages do you have on there? What's your support staff look like? What's your post-processing software? You need to know where you're at and then start to build from that. But you need to start in the entire workflow, not just related to the scanning. A lot of times cardiology or radiologists, they are in their 
in their environment, which is, you know, the reading room, the scanner and what they see. But if you're really looking to expand the business, you have to start from the first part of it, which would be potentially the order forms. What sort of order forms do you create? How do you make sure exams are scheduled correctly? What CPT codes uh, is it going to be? How do you receive that order? How do you route that to the correct facilities performing cardiac imaging? The days in which you have technologists, the whole process from billing to IT, what gateways you're using, um, your contracts with your vendors, there's a lot. So what I my recommendation is to anyone who's starting a cardiac imaging program is to determine what's your starting point, what are you looking to accomplish, and then think about the entire steps. If you design a program that is able to be scalable to multiple centers and reproducible, it's not going to break down as you grow. I suggest standardizing the process, becoming well aware about how to bill correctly, being on top of um, how scans are being performed for quality, educating your technologists, and also really educating your referring clinicians about the services you offer and get feedback from them. I've become a better radiologist by talking to my referring clinicians. I changed the templates up for our groups based on good feedback from clinicians about what they see valuable in the reports. And that's really how you, you, you grow the business and it's scalable as you add on more practices. Well, really good points from, from all three of you. I'm just going to add two of my kind of uh, important tips that I think is important. You mentioned quality, and I just want to double down on that. So quality is so important for, for cardiac CT. So it starts with really good hardware, really good training of your technologists, and obviously uh, expert uh, readers. So I think uh, cardiac CT, like every other imaging test, is highly dependent on, on good quality. And, and the second one, going back to what we mentioned on, on prevention, when we report cardiac CT to make sure that we use recommendations. So uh, the CADRADS uh, 2.0 document specifically has recommendations for preventive therapies, depending on the amount of plaque. And I'm a huge fan of putting that in reports. And I, I have to acknowledge that 15 years ago, I didn't like to give people recommendations because I wasn't always uh, very certain about what we need to do. And today uh, we have that certainty. And I found that uh, physicians really appreciate those recommendations. 